Á hverju sumri er unnið við fornlega uppgröft víða um land. Sumverkefni taka mánuði eða fáin ár. Eitt slíkra verkefna nefnist Mosfellsverkefnið og hefur það snúist um fornan bæ að hrísbrú í Mosfellsdal. Um fornleifar annarstaðar í dalnum og niður við sjó í Mosfellsbæ. Við mæltum okkur mót við upphafsmannin og verkefnistjóran Jesse Bajok, fornleifa og norrænu fræðing sem hefur tengst Íslandi í meira en þrjá áratugi. Hei, hei, gaman að sjá þig. Já, blessa þér, gaman að sjá þig. Hérna, nú þegar við stöndum í minninu á Mosfellsdal, segðu mér aðeins frá upphafin að þessu fornleifa verkefni Mosfells bæjar eða Mosfells og af hverju þú valdir þennar stað akkurat? Af hverju þú valdir þennar stað er að verkefnið byrjaði fyrir 15 ára síðan og það hefur verið frá í byrjan stórt verkefni og á þessum tímabilinu hef ég skrifað grein í Scientific American um Paget Sjúkdóm og það var bara komið þetta þessi hugmynd að fara inn í dal og sjá hvort bærinn sem er nefndir í sögunni og leifur voru til. If we shift into English, who has been funding this? And from the start, uh, it was the Mentamala Raudinated that put in the seed funding. And since then we've had numbers of universities in many countries. And uh, we've worked with the farmer at uh, Mosfell, who's been great from the start, Olav Ingimundersson and his son Andreas. And Mosfellsbeir has been a constant help in this project. Shouldn't we head for the uh, for the farm then? Huh? Yes, let's okay, go. Let's go. Nú varandi bær að Hrísbrú stendur rétt neðan við helstu uppgraftastæðina. Fornni bærinn hérna Mosfell en heitið flutti seinna að núverandi kirkjustað. Well, Jesse, as we enter the, the ruins over here, t tell me about the, the main findings you, you, you discovered so far. The main findings are essentially that we have all the important pieces of a major chieftain's establishment. There's a longhouse, a church, a graveyard set in a landscape that controls the valley, looks to the port, controls the port, sees up the valley and is protected by a mountain. If we enter right here is the church. And this was a conversion age church. It's a rectangular building. If you stand there, you're on one post and I'm standing on another. And then this part here is an addition for a chancel or code. So the altar would have been moved to there. And if we walk this way, the long house is 10 meters or 12 meters away. It had a, a, an outer part with a door here and a wooden floor. And we would come right here are the walls in the interior, mm -hmm. another door. And we're entering into the part where this is higher than the sunken Feldskalde, the main, the main part. Mm -hmm. And there was a room here which had a wooden floor. And here was a food storage part. Mm -hmm. and now we go down and here are the benches on the side and a long fire which is yeah. almost six meters long down the center and it would have had central posts where the posts are right in front of the benches so that food was probably brought down on tables people slept and ate on at this point and then the house continues and here we leave the central part which you see behind me with the benches on the side. And there was a division in the room, a very large door here. And this is where animals were kept and work was done. Many people that we know from the sagas lived here. Grimur Svertingsson, who was the Lögsögumaður. His wife was Thordis, the daughter, the stepdaughter of Eyjot Skatla Grimsson. Eyjot lived here in his old age. He said to have warmed his feet at that long fire. And it's here where in this valley, he killed the slaves, he hid his silver. And there's a great deal of information and history with this house. This is, it's rare for archeology span to have so much verification, both through written sources of the presence of a farm, who lived on the farm, and for archeology span to be able to come up with 
all the physical material remains. It's in this house that we found over 30 beads. It was a high status house. There was a great deal of wealth here. And if you look down to the sea, it controlled the port, controlled the valley, and there's a mountain behind it for protection. If you're thinking like a Viking, a lot of mother coming here in the ninth century, this would be a great this place. Is the place. Þrjár ár hafa myndað töluvert stóra ósólma nýst í Mósfellsbæ, Varmá, Kaldakvísl og Lervósá út í Leiruvóg. Þar verða til djúpir álar á flóði. Staðurinn tengist Hrísbrú og Mósfelli, en hvernig? Jesse, you have a number of people working with you this summer. What are your main tasks? Our main task this summer is to understand the harbor and we're standing in the inner harbor right now. We have three teams working here. We have an oceanographic team, we have a geophysics team, and we're trying to find the remains of human habitation, perhaps of booths, perhaps where ships were drawn up. And we have an archeological team, which is guiding the work, and we're integrating all that work into the archeology. span um, the most important discovery so far is the depth of the inner harbor, which we've been using coring, and this is a team from Kiel that has um, usual and unusual equipment for determining coastal environments. And one of the things that they brought with them is a seven meter uh, bore. And we've been able to determine that the inner harbor, which you can see, which is right in front of us, which is now covered, by plants and salt marsh was three and a half meters deep, which is more than enough for a ship at the period. Behind us is uh, Skipholt, where the ships were brought into this area here. And what's an important that we've learned this summer from Skipholt is that Skipholt is very old. About a third of the way down, there is a 1500 Katla layer of ash, meaning everything below that is older. Smám saman er myndin af umsvifum sögualdarhöfðingja í Mósfellsdal að skýrast. Fordlefarnar tala sínu máli. Og þetta sumarið eru mælingar með aðstóð jarðelisfræðinga, haffræðinga og jarðfræðinga forleikur að frekari uppgreftri. En hvernig sér Jesse Bajok fyrir sér enn fleiri ár í þverfæglegri vinnu að verkefninu? This is the type of project that you think you're going to end, and then at the end of every season, you find there's more to do, and it's more exciting. The future is that we see this valley as a valley system where all the different parts fit together, and we keep finding different parts from the harbor, up through the chieftain's establishment, up through Skekjastadr, and across the valley. A whole Viking Age life is coming into view, and we're going to continue.